Hello, welcome back to Math Time with Professor Prime, and I am your host, as always, Professor Prime. Math and food, two of my favorite things. Wow, this is becoming a theme, it really is. Um, because I think this is the fourth one I shot, and it was always like, math is one of my favorite things, and this other thing is one of my favorite things, but you know, it is what it is. I like a lot of things. Like, um, but yeah, food is definitely a big one. Um, so I, I want to talk about like how math relates to food. I'm going to talk about that in a variety of, um, contexts. You know, I want to talk about like, um, how does it work with, you know, um, in terms of like, well, eating and in terms of cooking and um then like you know a little bit more on the business side and um some other things along that line so some more meta larger levels so yeah let's talk about it and also i would like to point out is i'm recording i am getting hungry and i don't know if it's just because it's been a while or like talking about food is making me hungry but i am i'm there i am definitely there um but yeah so let's talk with the eating let's let's talk about that um and i guess like uh kind of use it to talk about like the preparation and the cooking parts too um so when it comes to eating right like um we eat a certain amount of meals a day it, it may vary for each person the standard to have three meals for a lot of people um me personally sometimes it's three sometimes it's four times sometimes it's five uh, but either way we have like those meals and we might get snacks in between and in each of those cases right like we um we're portioning off that food in each meal right like i might have like a plate full and i might have certain things like i might have a chicken leg and then i might have like um four spoonfuls of mac and cheese i might have like um a cup worth of broccoli if i'm just like really into broccoli that day and that might be my plate, and you know, I have it nice and divided into thirds. But like, um, my whole thing is like, there's a lot of math when it comes to like portioning the food. And um, then there's a lot of math in the process of you eating it, but you know, your body's doing that naturally, you know, it's grinding things up. It's, um, you know, as you chew and chew and chew and counting it down. Um, but so there's math though, and just like eating, but there's this math in like how you design your meals and if you are like on a diet you might also think about um calories or even if you're not like on a strict diet you might still be thinking about like how much how many calories you're taking in um so you, you you're counting and you're keeping track of that with each meal and you're also like um keeping count of um the proper amount of calories right like because you might have some things that are a lot of calories but they're not good calories so you know you're thinking about that and so that's the eating side, right? Like there's a lot to be said with that. And then like um, with the prepping, that's something you could say too, and kind of ties to that eating. Like you might design your meals and like, so you might be counting up what you need for this meal and that meal, how many calories you need and all that good stuff. But in terms of like, well, how you store that food, right? You might have a certain amount that you want to store here. You might want to control your portions in terms of um, preparation, right? So you might, make a big meal like I sometimes I make some mixes like recently I made a chicken um bean like baked bean and um broccoli mix and I portioned off how much I want in each container so that um I have an idea um of what that's like for each meal and sometimes you might get exact and sometimes you might not be but you're approximating but you have a good idea of it usually and so there's that but then there's the cooking side and that's where you really get heavy with the math because when you are prepping something now a lot of times right like if you know a recipe you can get good at really like approximating it but um if you're looking like in a cookbook or you're looking online you'll find that you're using a lot of math you're losing a lot of fractions um all that good stuff um you're using different measurements to say how much of this or that you want, right? So, like, if I'm making cookies, for instance, like, um, I, I might want a certain amount of eggs in there or, like, a um, certain amount of flour, um, milk if you put it in there, I guess. Um, or I might want a certain amount of chocolate chips in there or, like, I have a good approximation of how much I want in this or that. But um, my whole idea is just that, like, you have to have a good idea number wise 
what you want to do. And so the other thing is like um, the process itself, right? Like, cause you might be boiling some water and you know, you want to know how hot to boil it, right? And then what to do after that. And so I find like math can like get into that a lot or like sometimes I'll make some pancakes. And so like, uh, I'll maybe like take um, a large cup and then like, you know, make, take the um, mix and put that in a bowl. And then like maybe I'll add um, two thirds of a cup of water or milk. And then I might add a certain amount of cinnamon to it. Like, and I might use my own units. I might say, well, maybe I'll take a pinch of cinnamon or something like that. Um, and maybe I'll add like two large spoonfuls of like brown sugar in there. So um, things like that. And maybe I want to make a certain amount of pancakes within mine, right? Like uh, I might want to make some big pancakes and with something of like that, I might get like four to six, depending on how I, um, you know, put it on. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it's, it's involved in like all that, like, um, from the eating to the cooking to the preparation and then like on a larger level, um, you know, restaurants, right? Like, um, because you want to get a good idea of like, um, the portions that you want to use in terms of preparation for different material, but like what you're also going to give the people and for how much, and you have to like think about um traffic flow like how many people are eating in here usually around this time and you definitely have to think about how much it's all costing you and um what you're getting out of it you know you have to think about profits you have to think about supply and demand you have to think about all that when you're dealing with a restaurant when you're dealing with food and all this can be applied to like grocery stores as well like um you can think about like what's going in there in terms of food um how much that costs and if you're on a budget then you want to think about how much does this food cost well and what can i use it for and like how much of this or that am i getting out like um and then when you're actually portioning things off you can have some fun with that too so like for eggs for instance like um if i'm using them for something big then that's gonna like not last me that long um so i have to consider like what i want to use it for so like if i get like let's say um 18 eggs or something um, if I go and I hard boil them, like little bit by little bit, that's gonna last me a lot longer than if I like use them for omelets, right? Like, um, so I wanna think about that sort of thing too. But my whole point is just like, it, it, food is important to us and math has more of a role in that than we think that it does. And whether we're consciously following a recipe or consciously, um, you know, portioning uh, the food for ourselves or not we're still doing the math it's conscious or it's unconscious but it's there um, and I think it's worth looking into it so if there's like ways though that I haven't thought about how math is using food please feel free to share um, but that's just some of the ways that I'm thinking about it and yeah so I find that to be interesting math is everywhere I'm telling you uh, so yeah I'll see you in the next video and Professor Prong I'm out <laughs>